So the lesson for me is that I thought no one wanted to talk about race and identity, but it turns out a lot of people do, and they're just trying to figure out how. After I wrote a book about my own family's very complex racial legacy, I was afraid that people wouldn't want to talk openly, candidly, courageously about race. We decided to ask people to share micro memoirs, six word stories about race and identity, this thing that's allegedly very difficult to talk about. And what I will share with the audience is what I learned by putting a basket on the table and watching people fill it up over years with incredibly honest, candid, raw, searing, introspective, um, first time I've ever said this, type stories. So many of us are carrying stories in our hearts, in our minds, in that proverbial backpack that you know we've always heard about, um, that you don't see it, people don't talk about it at work, but you realize it's there and people bring it into the classroom and they bring it into the workplace, they bring it into the marriage, they bring it into the sanctuary. Um, it's with them all the time. And even though it's not articulated, it has a tremendous impact on the way that they order their steps in life. I mean, here at USD, you're training the next generation of leaders. The muscles that young people need to build right now are more concerned with building bridges, with figuring out how to engage with someone that you don't agree with. And not necessarily to find common ground, but to figure out how to work effectively together when you're not sharing common ground. We hear a lot about how divided we are as a country, but I think words are how we find each other. Actions are how we define our lives, but words are this connective tissue that allows us to, to listen and to find each other.